Who are you? Bella Bromi. My mom's dog name is, is named Bella. Do you know that? You can go sit by that pale kid over there. Thanks. Hi. My name is Bella. Bella Bromine. Yeah. What's your name? Edward. Edward. Coopers. Okay, class. Today we're going to learn about nomenclature. A term referring to the naming of compounds coming from the Latin word nomen, meaning name. Why, Coma? This is going out to you. Learning about monatomic anions today and how to name them. So, like my name, bromine, it's a monatomic anion, right? Correct. Do you know how to name them, though? No. What you do is you drop the end of the element's name and replace it with an I D E suffix. So, will my name would then become bromide? Correct. Do you know how to name monatomic cations, Bella? Oh, I do not. Well, if there's only one possible charge, you use Roman numerals or suffixes to indicate the charge. But, if there's more than one charge possible, you just read the name. Cuprus, you're so stupid. This is how you name monatomic cations. If there's only one possible charge, just read the name. But if there's more than one charge possible, Roman numerals or suffixes are used to indicate the charge. Wow, Jacob, you're so smart. Thanks, Bella. So, I would be copper two? That's cupric. You would be copper one. Cupris, I doubt you know about binary compounds. I know. You name binary compounds by writing the cation first. Then the subscripts are used to indicate the number of ions. You must have it balanced, though. The subscripts match up the proper number of cations and anions. Cross the subscripts, Bella. Can you give me an example? Bella, if we were together, according to the binary compound naming rule, we would make cuprous bromide. C-U-B-R without any subscripts? Ew. Hmm, Jacob Phosphorus, what would we make? Phosphorus tribromide. Hmm. Covalent bond. PBR3. <laughs> to name covalent compounds, Bella, you use prefixes to show the number of each element present. There is only one atom of the first element present. The mono prefix is omitted. The ide suffix is used just like in ionic compounds. Oh yeah? Phosphorus? You think you're so cool? I know how to name polyatomic ions. All you have to do is treat them like a single monatomic ion when you balance and write the formula. Then you use parentheses, but only when there is more than one polyatomic ion. Beat that, Phosphorus! Hey Edward, what are you drinking? Blood. I know what you are. Say it. Out loud. You're a Norwalk. No, I'm a cation. Hey, Bella. Edward. You know, I was thinking, you want to be my girlfriend? I don't know, there's this other guy, Jacob. Together, we could make an ionic pop. You know what I mean? Ionic? Yeah, how's that sound? I'm not sure yet. Hey, Jacob. I heard you and Edward were going to make an ionic bond. Oh, you know, if we were together, we'd make a covalent bond. <laughs> Jacob? Edward. <laughs> hey, Bella. How's it going? If the atom contains oxygen, you add the prefix hydro and the suffix ic acid to the basic element name. But if it doesn't contain oxygen, it ends in eight and you add ic acid suffix. Oh, so like you ate something icky. Exactly. If it doesn't contain oxygen and ends in ite, you add the suffix us acid. Zombies always win. 
always win.